how do you do comedy in an era of political correctness? Because it seems like everybody is getting slaughtered right now. Every comedian yeah. gets to a certain point, and then <clears throat> the knives, the long knives, just come out if you make the wrong jokes. Uh, jokes, unless you are properly woke or you're you're Amy Schumer, and you're just going to make a bunch of feminist jokes or something. Right. You can say whatever you want, but if you're anybody else, I mean, you're a white dude who's relatively conservative on politics, or at least is perceived that way, and that means the knives come out. So how do you how do you deal with that? You know, it's it's kind of interesting, but I I do feel like they do as much as they think they can get. <clears throat> Meaning, I, I've had plenty of that in my my career. I think if the attitude is, I don't apologize, I don't care, attacking me is not going to be satisfying for you. There needs to be every, I was just talking about this on my podcast, which is I used to fight uh, in the street a, a fair bit, not a lot, but like I've had definitely had some street fights and I knew how to fight. And I was just like, I don't know, 22. And I was like, I would fight. And I always knew I wasn't a mean person and I would not pick a fight with anybody. But I knew if somebody wanted to fight, I knew exactly how to get them out into the street with me to fight. Like, we want to leave this party and we will go fight. I would tell them, I don't want to fight. I, I, I don't want, I don't want trouble. Like, I really don't want trouble. And their answer would be, oh, you found trouble. And I'd go, <laughs> yeah, but I'm really, I'm kind of a mellow guy. And, and I just, I'm sorry if I stepped on your foot or something in the kitchen, but I don't. And they'd be like, yeah, well, this is a bad day for you. And I'd go, okay, well, I guess we got to fight. <laughs> and then we'd go fight. And I'd beat them up. But, <laughs> but all I had to do was take a step or two backwards. And they took two big step forward. If you step forward, they don't step forward forward. They, they realize it's no, it's, 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 it's no fun going after Adam Carolla. It's, it's much better getting this guy fired or that guy fired or this guy, the people who issue the long winded sort of crafted by their publicists, apologies and all. It's like, it's so much better. And, and really all you do is you just kind of tell them to shove off a couple of times and they just kind of go like, all right, he's no good. Like he's no good because he doesn't issue these long winded Apologies. So there's like that. And I, I, I'm also just at a, at a certain point, you will be who you are. Like, no, Howard Stern can say whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And no one ever demands that Howard Stern apologize because Howard Stern is Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. Or it's, it's my Snoop Dogg can smoke weed wherever he wants. <laughs> So <laughs> if I went into like an AIDS hospice, I couldn't spark up. Snoop Dogg could fire up a hookah pipe in the middle of an AIDS hospice. And they'd be like, that's no, that's fine. He's, he's Snoop Dogg. You know what I mean? Like he literally can smoke pot wherever he wants because he's Snoop Dogg. So once you establish yourself as I'm the person who says things that offend people, they sort of leave you alone. You, we've said, I've said it a couple times on the show, you're not ostensibly political. You found yourself in this sort of circle where you have friends on the left, obviously, like you're still good friends with Jimmy Kimmel, but then you're also very good friends with Dennis Prager. You and I are friendly. Uh, so why is it, do you think, that uh, you've been embraced by the right when you're really sort of, you consider yourself sort of an apolitical dude? Well, you know, it's weird. So people say, oh, you're conservative, you're right wing or whatever. I said, well, go back and listen to Loveline, the non-political radio show. It from 1997, where I'd go, look, family, education, people shouldn't be having kids who can't afford kids. They need to, the families need to stay together. They need to raise these kids. They need to do these crazy right wing notions now uh, that no one ever thought of as, as political. Uh, that was political, like wash the whites with the whites and the colors with the colors. Like it was just, that's how you do laundry. Like this is how you become successful. You stay together, you raise your kids, you pay, you don't buy things you can't pay for. You don't rely on the government. The government's not gonna do a good job taking care of you. You have to do it yourself, you know, delayed gratification, you know, whatever. All the stuff I learned through, quite frankly, this little microcosm called North Hollywood High. It was a very interesting combination of, 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 different, of different folks, different ethnicities and different whatever. I was in North Hollywood High. We had the Jewish kids 
from Studio City, uh, the hills, Hebrew Heights, as they're always called. And they would come down to North Hollywood High. That was their, their high school. And, you know, there was Jeff Buck and Nate Wittenberg and Robbie Levine and all these kind of guys. And they're like, their family stayed together and they were in student council and they did well in their schoolwork and stuff like that. And then there was like white trash dudes like me from literally right next to the high school, in North Hollywood, my buddy Ray and Chris and stuff like that. And then we had some Mexican guys who were like from a little deeper from the Valley and some black guys who were like bust in from South Central because I played football with all those guys. And at a certain point when, when, when North Hollywood High was, was done, I say done because like my friends, some of them didn't graduate or they just moved on or they wandered off and had jobs. The Jewish kids like went off to UCLA and Stanford and Cal. The black kids just went back to the hood and the white trash and the Mexican guys hung out and got jobs digging ditches. And so I was like, hmm, what's the through line here? And it's like, well, all my friends, their, pa their fr parents were divorced. They were living in apartments, like they weren't into education. They were hands off. You know, we didn't, we were just sort of warehouse, like nobody was doing homework or, you know, whatever. So I put together this composite, like very quickly of like what works and what doesn't work just based on this Petri dish called North Hollywood High and how these folks went off to be successful and we went off to toil in the sun. So I understood that and I always preached it. And, it, and, it, and no one ever accused me of being political for a, many of the notions I had about just sort of self-reliance. You know, my mom got welfare and food stamps and she was a mess and the house was a mess and we barely got by and it was a, a bad life. And she was like hobbled by it. And she, know, she doesn't know, she's not, you know, she doesn't have spina bifida and she's not, she's, she's not a moron. She just never knew what she could do. Just like I never knew what I could do until the radio station fired me. Like I needed to be pushed out. And if the radio state, I would have worked there for a thousand years. So all of a sudden these things have become political stances, which is, it's kind of confusing to me. And I'm not really into arguing about, you know, who does a better job. Like, look, it's, it's also a weird world where you can't speak logically to people. Like I've had a million, like some of the stuff I get thrown back in my face is like, uh, look, uh, if something happens to me and my wife, I'd like a mom and a dad, a male and a female to raise my kids because we both offer very different things. Uh, but that being said, I will take the lesbian couple or the gay couple who's doing a little better who has a better minivan that's a little newer and a little safer, who lives in a better part of town with a better school system, I will take them over uh, the heterosexual couple if they're marginally better. If everything is exactly the same, this is weird world we live in. It's like everything's the same. I'll give them the male and the female because traditionally I figured out through nature that works a little better. And everyone's like, Oh, so you don't think a gay couple should be able to raise? Like, no, that's not what I said. <laughs> and then they do this one, which is always insane. And I, I don't, I, 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 I wonder this out loud all the time. And I'm going to pose this question to you because I believe I have to be intellectually honest. One of the biggest problems I got into is when somebody said to me, who's funnier, men or women? I didn't think I was allowed to say they're both exactly the same. I had to answer the question. I said, men are funnier because they're trying to get laid. But <laughs> so they've evolved that way. <laughs> Think about all that and all we put into getting laid. <laughs> but also, I said, that being said, I know plenty of women that are funnier than every guy I went to high school with. But if you're just going to ask me, I'll go, I'll go with men. And I got a ton of crap for that. But here's what I, I don't get. Every time I say to somebody, look, all things being equal, I'll take the heterosexual couple. Now, if the gay couple's doing a little better and, and their tax returns and lives in a safe neighborhood, I'll take the gay couple. And then they go, all right, so you're saying the heterosexual couple could be strung out on meth and they could, the woman, is she's a full-time prostitute. He's pimping her out. They're cooking up. They're making meth in their <laughs> bathtub of their apartment, which by the way, is in a very dangerous part of town. And the gay couple, um, that's David Geffen, and he's out on a yacht in San Tropez. You would take, and I said, 
Uh, no. I think I was insanely clear. I said all things are the same. All things are the same. I would take this. But if the other couple, then they go, well, that's a flawed premise because you can't make everything the same. And I'm like, <laughs> just make them have the same job, live in the same neighborhood. Go, I, I don't know. Some may think one guy likes Jeopardy, the other likes Desperate Housewives or something. But just make everything the same, would you? And like, no. <laughs> like, are these people stupid? Like, what? When they say to me, so you would take this couple that raises uh, rabies-infested raccoons in their camper, in their double-wide, <laughs> over David Gavin? I'm like, no. But why did you say that? Why would you say, like, <laughs> are they insane? Are they intellectually dishonest? Are they lying? Like, I, I can't. I, I and what do they expect me to go? Right. Well, oh, you caught me. Like I, I said the same. <laughs> Everything's got to be the same. I do think that they're looking for a a world in which they're, they need an answer. And the answer is always going to be that it's their political viewpoint or you have a character flaw. And right. so if you do not repeat their political viewpoint, then it must be that you have a character flaw. And that character flaw means that secretly, even though you've already said this stuff, secretly you do believe that the rabies infested double wide with the heterosexual couple is better than David Geffen because... Your secret motivation is that you like gay people worse than you like straight people. You like straight people more than you like gay right, people. Right. Uh, and so even if you say all things being equal, deep down in, in your heart, you know secretly that what this is really coming from is animus for gay people. Right. Uh, I, think, I think that's really what it is. I think because uh, having spoken with more